This is an example of how to build an entity framework data access layer using Inhydrate. Many of you are familiar with Inhydrate in that we are trying to build a model-driven architecture tightly integrated within Visual Studio.net. We have a traditional data access layer that we're now calling the NHDAL for Inhydrate Data Access Layer. There's also a new data access layer, EFDAL, for Entity Framework. The reason we decided to go down the road of Entity Framework is that it is created by Microsoft, it is standard, and a lot of people are going to be using it. And there are some little issues that people are having with it being as it's so new. So we've actually tried to eliminate some of these issues and, and build more model-driven architecture around it, more so than it already is. We've actually moved the model out of the project level into the solution level. Once you move the model to the solution level, you can actually generate a lot more types of projects and have a complete framework based upon a single model. There's some big wins with using Inhydrate right out of the box that you just don't get out of Entity Framework, which is uh, support for type tables, generation of derived tables, and let me qualify that in that Entity Framework does support inheritance, but the syntax that you have to use for derived tables is a little kludgy, so we've actually tried to eliminate that so you can query it just like any other table. There's also auditing. We have field auditing with created and modifies that just come for free that you can assign to any table. There's also now table auditing, so you can actually track all the history, adds, updates, and deletes of any table inside of your model. There's also bulk operations. One of the shortcomings of EF at the moment is that you can't delete a million rows without loading them all into memory. So we have bulk operations for updates and deletes based on uh, the table structure in your model. You do not have to load that data into memory to actually use that. It's essentially issuing SQL commands against your database and doing it on the server, not on the client. Now we're going to start with a pretty simple model. We've used this in some other examples. Just an employee region, employee customer model. So what we're going to do is we have some inherited tables. Uh, customer and employee are inherited from system. And there's a region table and territory table. But in any case, we're just going to generate a, a database installer and an entity framework access layer. You'll notice very tightly integrated with Visual Studio. It actually creates all the projects directly into your solution. Done. Okay. Now we're going to compile these. And everything compiled correctly. Now, the database installer can actually be run directly from the environment. We're actually just going to run the install util provided by Microsoft. Ooh, that's the wrong one. We can just use the 2.0 framework. This is a this is a 3.5 DLL, and we just say we're going to run this DLL with the install util provided by Microsoft, and we can say debug start new instance, and this is actually going to install the database. We're going to create a database called my test. This is actually creating a database uh, on the SQL Server instance. And now we can close this. Okay. Now, we actually have this Entity Framework DAO generated up here. And now we're going to use it. This is an Entity Framework DAO just like any other. So I have a code snippet here. And you'll notice inside of the DAO, we have an entity called a region. I'm just going to insert a few regions. So I'll put a breakpoint here. We can step through it, and I'm going to add region 3, 2, 1, save changes. And that saved correctly. Now, we're going to look to see if it's in the database. I'm just going to replace this with another piece of code. Now, this piece of code is going to uh, select all the regions and loop through them. And we create our context, select our regions, and we go through it. And it's also ordered by name, as you see. And we see that's region 1, region 2, and region 3. And this is using Entity Framework based on Inhydrate. 